these two cells are not dividing. They are quiescent. One of them, the yellow cell, will remain in this state and will not begin another cell cycle of division. It will not pass a checkpoint, a critical state where a cell finally commits to another cell division. The green cell, on the other hand, will pass this checkpoint and after which commit to duplicating its DNA and to another cell cycle. The dividing cell has been stimulated to produce cyclin D, which is a signal to enter G1. In many cells, such as the cells of the breast, estrogen binding to the estrogen receptor promotes the production of cyclin D. Cyclin D binds to the cyclin-dependent kinases 4 and 6. They are appropriately phosphorylated, and this complex will promote the entry into G1. The non-dividing cell will not produce high levels of cyclin D. It will not phosphorylate cyclin-dependent kinases 4 and 6 to prepare for cell division. And it will produce cyclin-dependent kinase inhibitors, such as protein 16, protein 21, and protein 27. These block the activity of the cyclin D CDK complexes so that they cannot push the cell from G0 into G1. In the active cell, the cyclin D CDK4 or 6 complex will phosphorylate the retinoblastoma protein. This causes it to dissociate from the transcription factor E2F. This not only stops the repression of the transcription of genes for cell division that the RBE2F complex enables, but it also allows E2F to act as a transcription factor for genes promoting cell growth. For example, the synthesis of DNA in the S phase requires E2F. So in the active cell, RB is dissociated from E2F, and E2F can now activate the transcription of genes which promote cell growth. In the inactive cell, which has not passed the G0G1 checkpoint, retinoblastoma is still bound to E2F. As such, it represses the activity of genes which are required to enter the S phase and replicate DNA. In this active cell, cyclin E is produced, and after it binds to CDK2, this complex then increases the activity of genes required for the late G1 to S transition. Without cyclin D CDK4 activity, this inactive cell is less likely to produce cyclin E. Also, a number of the cyclin dependent kinase inhibitors, such as proteins 21 and 27, can bind to the cyclin E CDK2 complex and inhibit its activity. The potent tumor suppressor protein P53 increases the production of the cyclin-dependent kinase inhibitors which block uh, the entry into the cell cycle at this checkpoint. P53 levels are in turn regulated by a number of mechanisms inside the cell, especially those which recognize damage to DNA which should be repaired before a cell can enter the cell cycle and divide again. So BRCA1, which is often mutated in breast cancer, the genes ATM, ATR, and the checkpoint kinases are all involved in increasing P53 levels to block a cell's passing this G0, G1 checkpoint. There are many more proteins which would be involved in the progression of the cell cycle in active cells as well. So for example, the transcription factor C-MYC, which is often stimulated as a result of the MAP kinase pathways, would both increase the production of the cyclins, which would promote the passage through this checkpoint, and decrease the production of the cyclin-dependent kinase inhibitors, 
which would block a cell's progression through this checkpoint.